Hi everyone, welcome to 2023. I've got a couple of weeks off work and I've had some time to do some retro videos and work over the last week, which is great. I've got a couple of videos that I'm planning to do. Some are half complete or the benchmarking is done, but I wanted to try and get this one out this week because I try and do content that is a bit unique or not very common on YouTube. There's a lot of retro videos out there, which is great, I love it, but I also, when I do stuff, I wanna try and find things that are a bit unique. And I think this is one of them. This is the Rise MP6. It's a Socket 7 uh, CPU that originally was released in 1998. This particular one is from 2001, I believe. And this is the iDragon, which is a slightly different revision to the original MP6. I believe this has had a die shrink and it was originally just on a on the, the BGA, uh, designed for like low powered devices or, or laptops, uh, maybe firewalls, things like that. But this one was actually, has been put onto a proper Socket 7 board. So it's an interesting CPU because, well, I, I like most Socket 7 CPUs because there were so many different brands that worked in the, the, a single motherboard. So you had your Win chips, your Cyrex, your AMD, your Intel, and then you've got this Rise. Uh, Rise is a, I haven't done much research on them, but they, they didn't do so great, but I, I actually just Googled it and they ended up being purchased by SIS uh, later on. So I thought that was interesting. Anyway, this particular chip runs at 200 megahertz on a 100 megahertz front side bus and a two volt core. So it's a very low powered chip. And uh, I originally did some testing on another SuperSocket 7 board, uh, but I could only go down to 2.1, and I was a little concerned, so I didn't do much testing on it. I've now since moved to a new, a new board, which I'll show shortly, that can do pretty much any voltage and works really well. So the focus today is on benchmarking and looking at the performance of this. Uh, I'm going to compare it to this... AMD K6, it's not a K62, but it's a 266, mm. focus, no, maybe not, it's a 266 megahertz one, so it's quite a high uh, megahertz K6. I actually want to do some comparisons with the K6 and the K62 at the same megahertz. I believe really 3D now is the only difference, but uh, um, these are the two chips I'm going to be testing today. Uh, the reason for that is when the MP6 came out, it, it's, it's a official term was a PR266, even though it runs at 200 megahertz. And so it was kind of designed to go up against the K62266. Now, I haven't got one of those set up at the moment, but I believe this CPU is going to be fairly similar in terms of speed for most things. The K62 will be a bit better in 3D now stuff, but this will be a good comparison. Now, I would like to compare this with 200 megahertz CPUs as well. I've got lots of SuperSocket 7 benchmarks, but the reason I'm not going to do a direct comparison today is due to the new test bench that I have. So let's just go over here. I might have to zoom out a bit. If it will let me. Ah, I don't seem to be able to change the zoom while I'm filming. Let me just stop and I'll come back. You can change, I'm just not sure what's going on. Anyway, this is my current uh, test bench. It is a Gigabyte GA5AX Revision 5.2 and for the people in the know, I think it's the H Revision chipset. So one of the last ones, uh, which I think has some better IDE performance or something like that, not a big deal. Now this, the reason I'm moving to this board at the moment, I actually think I prefer the, uh, the MVP3 chipset. I actually think it's a bit faster, uh, the, but this board is, is, is better. The Gigabyte usually make reasonably quality boards. The caps seem to be working. It is a ATX form factor. So the board itself is very nice. The chipset also good, but I think the, I think the um, MVP3 is actually a little bit better. Now that one requires more tweaking. This you can just install the chipset drivers, it's pretty easy. The VIA one, you've got to install some memory latency stuff for Windows 98 and a few other things, but I have had better performance out of it. So we won't be able to directly compare it with my other 
CPUs I've benchmarked. So I will do some more with this. The big issue I've had with this chipset, which it's really weird, and I've, I've found with on Vogons, other people having a similar problem, but I never knew about it. The Voodoo cards just don't perform very well in, in the, the Alley chipset. I have no idea why. I don't know, I think I've tested both PCI and AGP, I'm, but I'm not 100% sure on that, but i just not getting the same performance that I, I was with, uh, with the uh, via boards, which I thought was very strange. So for this one, I'm using a TNT2. It's only 16 megabytes, but it's fairly similar speed to the Voodoo 3. So I think we can compare some CPU benchmarks, but really this is a new, new test bench, so we can't directly compare them. This board only has the 512K cache, so you, you could get a, so it's not the toppest end board, but it's pretty good. And I do like it because you can see here it goes uh, it goes down to like low 1 volt. Yeah, 1.3 volts is the lowest it'll go to. So that's perfect for the uh, MP6 CPU, which runs at 2 volts. So been really stable, this board. Uh, again, I really like the 3Com NIC because it's got Windows 98 drivers built in. Uh, I'll do another video. I've got a, I've written a whole web app to store all my retro files. Uh, and so basically I install Windows 98 and then I have a little web browser that has all of my, my files easily downloadable. Anyway, so that's all of this setup. I will do a summary of the performance at the end, but let's go and have a look at some of these benchmarks. So the test bench, as you can see, is using the Gigabyte motherboard. I'm using version 2.13 of the Alley chipset drivers, which definitely made an improvement. Now again, the megahertz are different between these two CPUs, so it would be worth probably benchmarking a 200 megahertz K6, but this two CPUs are similar in terms of the when they were released. So I think this is a good look at where they're placed in the market. I had a couple of issues with the uh, NVIDIA detonator drivers. So for Quake 3, I got better performance on the 12.41, but I had some graphical corruption in 3D Mark 99. So I upgraded to 44.03 uh, for 3D Mark, and I just ended up using that for UT. And I've done the same for both CPUs so that we can compare them. Now, the biggest limitation of the Rise MP6 was always nominally the L1 cache. It only has 16K of L1 cache, whereas most CPUs at that time were already on 32 or 64K of L1 cache. So I think that does play a role. The other thing to note though is the K6 here is running on a 66 megahertz front side bus, while the Rise MP6 is running on a 100 megahertz front side. So these two CPUs are really while different, this is what we, similar performances to what we would have expected uh, when they were released. So the first test is always CPU-Z, and this is just the integer performance to start with. And you can see here that the K6 is doing quite a bit better than the Ryze MP6. But the interesting thing here to note is that the performance difference is uh, not massive if you look at just clock for clock, basically. So we really have about a, just under 30% performance improvement to the K6, but that's also matches up with the megahertz. Now, the, the K6 is, is probably hampered a little bit by that 66 megahertz front side bus we have seen in other tests, the 100 megahertz really does help with the K6 too, especially at higher megahertz. But still, I thought that was interesting. So let's jump on to the floating point. And again, we see a similar result of approximately 30%. This time it's a little bit more, but uh, floating point uh, is uh, kind of in line with what I expect. They're both megahertz for megahertz performing fairly 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 similar now let's jump on to cpu mark now this one from my previous testing very much likes cache and uh, general throughput which is why i think this one's fallen down a little bit 
again it's still it's 30 something odd percent rise over to the k6 but the rise only has 16k of l1 cache so i think that hurts but i think the 100 megahertz front side bus does 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 help but you can see why why uh, rise decided to sell this as a low cost chip it uh, just does not perform at the same level as other chips on the market at the time let's jump on to mp3 encoding i quite like this benchmark that it's a i think a 40 megabyte wave file and i encode that at 128 bit to mp3 and this value is how much faster than real time it is playing so let's say if it's an eight megabyte file and the value here is one uh, so if it's an eight minute file and the value here is one it, it takes eight minutes to encode it uh, here you can see that it is faster than that so in this case it's 1.7 times faster so i think it's four point something minutes for the the rise uh, uh, to to en encode it now the the interesting thing here is that the performance between the two is a, a, it's quite a quite a bit closer so it's definitely not uh not that 30 percent so the floating point the raw floating point on the rise is looking not not too shabby the um i tested the the encoding without mmx as well on the rise and it didn't really drop it much that's the same i've noticed for most uh cpus with this benchmark that the sse 3D now and MMX, while they do improve performance, it's not drastic. So I think this is quite a good result for, for the MP6. Now jumping over to Quake 3. Now again, this one is, I think, pretty good. And we're starting to see some of the real world tests aren't too bad for the rise. Again, if it was 30% increase, the K6 would be getting 22 frames and it's not. So quite good here. Quake 3 is very different from Quake 1 and 2. It, it really values general system throughput. It's not really, really floating point heavy. So the 100 megahertz front side bus is, I'm sure is helping here with the memory running at 100 megahertz front side and, and the L2 cache. So I think that's what's helping the rise out here in, in Quake, Quake 3. Next, jumping over to 3D Mark. And again, we are now back looking at the 30% a little bit over 30 percent difference and this is in 3d marks uh, so i think the 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 real world benchmarks do seem to to favor the rise a bit better whereas the synthetic benchmarks are yeah not not quite um as as good which is interesting let's jump over to the cpu marks now i haven't used this test before this is quite a big difference here now i, th I think this might potentially also be a, a video card bottleneck because it's running direct 3d at 800 by 600 on the tnt2 and so i think that's why effectively what potentially if we had a faster cpu then if we looked at the previous results then maybe it would be more the percentage would have been higher so i'd, I'd have to really drill down to the frames per second on these or even drop the frame rate uh, to get a better understanding of it uh, but really the 3d mark is is lining up with most of the other tests really this one is a bit of an outlier and i haven't used this test before so i'm not sure if it is showing anything particularly of interest and then the final benchmark is unreal tournament and this one's really close now i think that this one's hard as well because this is running direct 3d this is not glide now so you can't compare this to my other tests because i'm running the tnt2 and and it's potentially possible that it's just you know, not an issue with the, the, the direct 3D uh, uses more CPU, but I'm not actually sure of the difference, but we're, we're quite close here in performance. So I'm it's a pretty good result here for the rise as well. So yeah, overall, uh, the, the CPUs, if you ran the K6 at, at 200 megahertz, I feel would be quite similar to the rise. And that concludes the benchmarks for today. I just thought I'd show you the boot screen. As you can see here, the motherboard is detecting the CPU correctly, which is nice.
couple of notes from testing the CPU. Actually really stable in this board. Ran very cool. I actually ran it without the fan plugged in, still with the heatsink on, just to see if it warmed up at all, because I was curious because I was fiddling around with it and didn't feel it getting warm at all. And yeah, even without the fan, the CPU didn't seem to warm up. Now I only tried it for 10, 15 minutes, so it is possible that it, it would. But the K6, after a couple of seconds without the, uh, a couple of minutes without the fan on, the, the heatsink definitely started to warm up. Not hot to the touch, but to warm up, while as the, the rise stayed very cool. So that was nice. But really, it's a fairly uninteresting CPU otherwise, simply because it doesn't offer anything that any other brand didn't have. The 100 megahertz front side bus is nice. The L1 cache is not great. It's only got MMX, so there's no case, there's no 3D now or anything interesting. So unfortunately, it is a little bit of a bland CPU from a performance perspective. Like the Cyrex has had their place for business machines because they had lots of L1 cache and, and their integer performance was very good. This is a very balanced CPU. The floating point is, is decent for the speed and so is the integer, but it's just not, not there. Now, I, I, it's probably worth trying to overclock this CPU, especially this iDragon version, because I'm sure it's on a smaller nanometer, which is why it runs at such lower voltage compared to the normal Rise MP6. And I reckon I could probably push it quite high, but I also don't want to mess too much with the CPU because it's fairly rare and was hard to get, and it is working, and I've heard that some of these CPUs can die pretty easily. So I'll leave it there for now. I might try and do some more 200 megahertz CPUs on this board to compare, although I will link my Vogons wiki page that has a lot of different CPUs that I used to benchmark on the previous boards, so you can compare there if you want. Anyway, welcome 2023, and I hope you guys have a great year, and I hope I get some more videos out. Thanks very much.